we're going to take a look at some claims from a messianic preacher who is saying that the Jesus we serve is a false Jesus. The Christ who we serve is a false Christ, and we need to go back to Messiah Yeshua, or some Hebraic form of Christianity. Uh, we're going to listen to his claim and see if it stands up to the teaching of Holy Scripture. I never, ever broke Torah or would ever have hinted that anybody ever should or would break Torah. Period. Okay. These are the words of St. John, coming from chapter 5 and 18. Therefore the Jews sought all of the more to kill him, because not only had he broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Now there's an explanation to what's happening here, but I'm not going to explain it. You explain it. You're the one making the claim. Let's continue. Yet the Jesus representation is the representation of the law is done away with. Okay, so there's this new teaching that the law is done away with. Christians must have just made it up. Let's just hear the words of St. Paul in Ephesians 2, 15. By abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace. That we're under grace now and oh not the goodness, law. He's... Oh my goodness, he's not even trying. Let's hear the words of St. Paul once again. As it comes from Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under law, but under grace. These people aren't even trying. They have forsaken the teaching of the church to such a degree that they have removed even the language of Holy Scripture from their argumentation. Even the modern-day cults like the Mormons and Jehovah's Witness at least try to conform to the letter of Scripture. These guys don't care. They contradict Scripture word by word. If you don't believe me, go watch what he just said again. He is contradicting the words of the Holy Apostle Paul. Do you have more authority than St. Paul? I don't think so. I believe in the authority of St. Paul, not whoever this guy is, person who speaks some new doctrine. I don't care what you have to say. Our authority is the apostles and prophets. So it is not some modern Christo-Jesus teaching which they have to reckon with. They have to reckon with the holy apostle St. Paul. Let's continue. And if any place you go is embracing any level of this fraud, then you're in a bad place, aren't you? Oh no, but we just love each other and the fellowship's so good and, and yet yeah, we don't agree on everything, but oh my gosh. You're setting yourself up for the problems that you're gonna face. I mean, this is, this is the quicksand that you're stepping into. Yeah, I think a lot of people are drawn into the Orthodox Church because of the unity that we have. And a lot of people are repelled by the false religion of Messianic Judaism by the sheer level of division because there is no united front. Jesus promised that there would be a united church, that he would bring a spirit of unity. And you look at all of these Messianic Torah movements and they despise one another. They disagree on the law because they're harsh legalist. There's very little love and grace to go around. While you even come to what we might say a modern church, which might not be perfect in doctrine, admittedly, you often feel a lot of love and unity. And I think that that is the fruit of the spirit versus the fruit of the devil who loves destruction, disunity, and division and false doctrine. Let me uh, express one thing uh, about the insufficiency of the law before I let you go here. This is the holy prophet Isaiah, and he is speaking of people exactly like this. The Jews did not always forsake the law of their Lord, but they did often forsake the Lord. This is how we ought to hear and speak to people who forsake the Lord, but want to hold to some of the external factors of the law, exactly as Messianic Jews and all of these other Torah movements do. Let's hear the words of the prophet Isaiah as they come in 1 and verse 12 through 13. When you come to appear before me, who has required of you this trampling of my courts? Bring no more your vain offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moons and Sabbath and the calling of convocation, I cannot endure iniquity in the solemn assembly. 
We don't need to reiterate the commands of the law, but all of those things are commanded by God. They are the form in which God has desired to worship. But when you forsake the doctrine of God, when God has revealed grace and truth through Jesus Christ and you forsake him, and you think you can call your solemn assemblies and your sabbats, and you can circumcise yourself and make yourself clean according to some external form of the law which is passing away, you are in abomination to God because the Lord has revealed grace and truth through Jesus Christ and all who forsake him, no matter what form you hold to, whether it be modern or ancient, you have forsaken God and you are required as Isaiah preaches to repent and come before him. And you must do it in the light of the new covenant. The old covenant has passed away. This is the teaching of the church, the eternal teaching of the church. The first Jerusalem council was about this. All of the other church councils and all of church history have upheld the decision from the Jerusalem council. The old covenant is gone. No more dead. It is done away with. Jesus is the messenger of the new covenant. And yes, the law has been done away with in all of its old covenant form. I hope that this helps you a little bit. These are just a few clips, but you hear a lot of argumentation like this, and so I hope that you find it helpful. I hope that you will look to the words of Scripture. Admittedly, we're not the final authority on what Scripture means, but when someone blatantly contradicts the words of Scripture and does it seemingly with no shudder in sight, you have to question whether or not they have even the inkling of the Holy Spirit, which would convict us when we so blasphemously contradict the words of God and his holy apostles and put that up as the one we serve as our Messiah. I think it's really dangerous. It's really nefarious. And I hope that you do not get drawn into this continually because it is very dangerous to believe in another gospel because in another gospel, no man shall ever be saved.